played Thomas J. Whitmore, who was the president of the United States in, uh, 20 years ago when the aliens first attacked. And uh, that was a, ended up being a successful defense of the planet Earth. As we start the second film, we uh, realize that uh, the now ex-president, Thomas Whitmore, is, uh, uh, has had a somewhat of a rough time of it, um, as, as is true with others who had some kind of telepathic engagement with the aliens, there, was, uh, there remained some psychic disturbance. And uh, he, Whitmore's still a hero to the world, but he's been somewhat sequestered off by his close circle of associates and family to, uh, because he's, he's convinced that uh, with his visions and uh, intuitions that they're coming back and no one really is believing him. 50% roughly of the population is gone. Uh, that's a rough hit. That means that people have, uh, you know, that you have less resources to do things and uh, they've been very seriously building a defense for a return of the, uh, if there's any um, antagonistic force from outer space coming back, they'll be met with some stiff resistance. This movie has got a very big scale. Um, you know, the, it's, I think the, the, when you begin to sense what the CGI is and all of the components that go into what uh, scale uh, can be done on a film these days, you see how it's, you know, 20 times bigger than the first one. It's pretty great to be with Rollins again. You know, he's he's fantastic company. He um, he has such a joy for his work, you know, and uh, an incredible uh, energy. There's a lot of story here, so I come to some the certain scenes I'm in, but he's come from scenes with other actors and. He seems to be able to go for a long day, of, you know, 18, 20 hours a day, and uh, be, uh, he's never, never uh, less than 100% of uh, his energy. I remember in January, uh, after we'd made it in January of the year that it got released, uh, seeing some list in a newspaper about the 20 top movies that are going to be coming this summer, you know, and they used to have more of the tentpole movies were all packed into the summer. And I think we were 19 on that list. And then um, April came around and so I saw another list and I went, hey, wait a minute, this is of these 10, we're in the 10 now. Well, that's good. Now we're coming up. And then they started to run the trailers of... Uh, you know, for the movie, which was, you know, July 2nd, they came, July 3rd, they attacked, July 4th, the day we fought back, White House, boom, you know, and it then it escalated like a rocket, and you, I realized, wow, this thing has got some juice. I really like the fact that it always rested in Roland's conviction and not whether we do it and how we do it and everything. His Roland and Dean together, you know, wanting to um, feel like they got the story right. That they didn't rush to a sequel uh, just because everybody told them it was a good idea and it had money behind it or something. You know, it really was for them. We did, we had such a ride on the first one. It, we, could, we could really, you know, rub some dirt into it if we, failed with a sequel. So I, it was really exciting to get cooked up for this year because it meant that Roland had, and had felt like he, had, he was in a position to really make the movie he wanted to make. The speech, you know, has a lot of uh, 
uh, just different times where I, you know, I walk into a bathroom, like a public bathroom in Seattle or something, and I'll see the speech written, or some quote from it on there, and or you know, Thomas Whitmore for president, or you know, just little graffiti here and there over <laughs> over the years, where you realize this is permeated into the culture in a way. Roland's energy and his real sense of how the story, the direness of the situation never is far from his mind. And I think, you know, Dean always talks about the great love that every, that you encounter with different characters and their engagement with other human, um, other people. And it, it's a really humanistic embrace of uh, who we are and the foibles of who we are and the kind of ridiculousness of what we can, how we can act in this face of incredible adversity and yet somehow uh, the gear gets in and the machine goes forward. What we wondered were, it's going to be true that they come back, but um, it is involved, uh, you know, now the the stakes are higher and um, the vision of what's possible, what has to be done is even greater.